Well, it's lovely. Um, there's a great project which has commenced, which is to plant a tree for the Jubilee to commemorate the 70 years of dedicated service of Her Majesty the Queen. And I'm lucky to be able to connect a lot of the green projects that we are doing across NHS Wales to commemorate the Queen's Jubilee. Um, and during COVID, this last 18 months has been absolutely challenging and, and difficult for everybody. One of the things that we found within the health service is the importance of green health, the importance of, you know, even simple things like walking and bathing in trees and having access to those areas as everybody found gardens were so important or being able to get to a beach. So throughout NHS Wales, we've been um, planting trees. So for example, the um, intensive care consultants of Cardiff went to the Brecon Beacons to plant trees. And those trees really were to compensate for the energy use um, during in the intensive care unit um, and you know the machines that have to be used there. There are others here in Howell Var. Um, we've been planting trees in Pembrokeshire, Wolf's Castle for every baby that's been born in Pembrokeshire. There's lots of initiatives. So, so what we're doing is bringing them together and, and dedicating them to Her Majesty the Queen. So it's going to help with the with the air. We're going to we're bringing youngsters in to plant and youngsters in to care for the trees. It's a place for patients and families and staff to find a wee bit of peace and solace and strength. Um, and, it, and it's all in, in commemoration of Her Majesty. So it's a wonderful, wonderful project. As you mentioned throughout the pandemic, obviously the health staff have been put under immense pressure, but you were quite mindful from very, very early on, you were taking information and advice and, and listening to the research being done in other countries like Italy and yes. China, and you created special calm places, places for your staff to be able as you say, to unwind in these green spaces. Yes, we did. And we need a lot more of them. And um, so where we could, all the health boards created calm rooms. And as you say, we were advised by colleagues where the wave of COVID hit them first. And there were places where before people went home to their families at the end of a 12 hour shift and really distressing um, things that they were dealing with and caring for people who were very, very, very ill and were apart from their families to keep everybody safe, that they could relax and the public were amazing. They donated, you know, water and food and we'd have mindfulness tapes and a shower, somewhere to get clean. We don't have enough of them, but we've learned from that. And similarly, and we were, we were advised by our Chinese colleagues that um, we ba we um, have psychologists in the intensive care units to help with staff and and that's an initiative across Wales and we will continue with that. So yes, the, gre the green space outside is really, really important and we want a lot, lot more of it and benches where people can just sit and relax. And, you know, one of the hardest things we found is people giving themselves permission to rest. Um, everybody has been giving so much of themselves that we also have to give to ourselves to keep strong and enabling people to just step outside, maybe have something to eat outside on a bench in fresh air, you know, with, surrounded by green. It's so important for their emotional well-being as well. So we've been creating calm rooms and green spaces across Wales, but we do need a lot more. And similarly for families and for patients. Um, we believe that green health is healing. Over the past few months, we've seen a relaxation of all the restrictions and measures, people going back to work, the daily commute starting again, that startup. But for you and those in the health sector, the work continues. You, you've mentioned to me that actually, you know, things might be moving on elsewhere, but this is probably the toughest period now coming up for you. You've also got winter ahead. Mm, it is the toughest time. In many ways, it's wonderful to see the return to some sort of normality. But internally, there many, many staff are absolutely exhausted. Um, I would say they're almost running on empty. It's been 18 long, long, long months of giving. So they're tired. We have a high level of sickness, which one would expect um, at the moment. We have an awful lot of people who haven't been able to have, have their procedures. 
So I know in my own health board, we went from nobody waiting for um, planned operations to 30,000 people now. And that weighs on us. It's one of our biggest regrets. Um, we're doing things to support people who are waiting, but what we really want to do is to be able to undertake their procedures. So we have that. We've also got a lot of COVID. Well, the infection rates in the communities are as high as the second wave. Thankfully, they are not um, translating into as many hospital admissions. And thankfully, they are certainly not translating into as many deaths. But there are many hospital admissions. There are still outbreaks of COVID. Um, and it's across the whole system. So, for example, what we're experiencing in, in the NHS with the demand is also being experienced in social care. So there's, um, the domiciliary care market is so fragile, which means we can't uh, discharge people, which means the hospitals the, is, are getting jammed and you'll see more ambulances outside. It's the whole system. So we're doing many things as much as we can to sort of unblock the system. So in Howeldar, we're creating our own bridging service, uh, in effect, a domiciliary care service up until March to try and enable people to get home, to care for them at home so that we can get more people in. So there's a range and range of factors come at the same time. But I think predominantly people are tired. They are tired um, and they can't rest and um, not not rest knowing that, you know, they're getting back to normal. They can take time off, but the challenges will continue. And it's, um, yeah, difficult. It's going to be a difficult winter ahead, but there's light. The vaccination, you know, the biggest NHS vaccination programme in its history has been so successful. Um, and we're up in that, you know, with the boosters and with the young people coming in. Um, but again, we're having to do that on top of, you know, the ordinary things that we do. So a lot of challenges, a lot of successes, but people, um, yeah, there's been no let up. In fact, it's probably, it is um, the hardest time at the moment.